This is Friedrich Werner von der Schulenberg, the German ambassador to the Soviet Union. Intense secret talks are underway between the two countries. Hitler is forcing the pace of these talks. He has already decided that Germany will invade Poland on August the 26th, and now he must enlist the USSR's support. In fact, Schulenberg himself can only guess at what Hitler's plans might be. He's an old-school diplomat, an aristocrat, and even served in Russia before the First World War. He joined the National Socialist Party in 1934, but he's not particularly sympathetic to the Fuhrer and Nazism. In fact, he's similarly skeptical of the regime of the USSR. Nominally, nationalism stands against communism, but it's not the only issue. In the USSR, Stalin is in power. Waves of repressions are taking place. They are aimed against ethnic minorities, among other groups of people. And Schulenberg is trying to shield Germans from repressions. But Schulenberg, like his role model, Bismarck, believes that the worst thing for Germany would be a war with Russia. Moscow these days is a hive of diplomatic activity. The British and French military missions are in the city, working for the USSR's support of Poland, but their talks are making little progress. In contrast, German-Soviet talks are going well. Yesterday's foes, the two nations, seemed ready to reach an agreement. Schulenberg is happy. He is confident that as soon as Germany negotiates security for itself, that Britain and France will force Poland towards moderation and flexibility. But Germany needs more than just a trade agreement. Germany's foreign minister arrives in Moscow. Ribbentrop is in a hurry. Preparations for a war with Poland are underway, and Germany needs Soviet support. Just a few hours later, Ribbentrop, together with his delegation and Schulenberg, arrives for a meeting with Molotov, and Schulenberg sees Joseph Stalin for the first time. The Soviet Union is only prepared to sign a non-aggression pact if a secret protocol is added to the agreement. The protocol includes points about future interests in Europe. The USSR's sphere of influence will include Finland, Estonia, Latvia, the Romanian regions of Bessarabia and eastern Poland. Germany's includes Western Poland and Lithuania. The USSR will deny the existence of this protocol right up until Perestroika in the late 1980s. Hitler gives his approval, and von Ribbentrop and Molotov sign a 10-year non-aggression pact. The news of the agreement is a surprise for most Germans, and they react with relief. But it sends shockwaves throughout Europe. The bitter enemies have made a deal. It is clear that war is unavoidable. Poland is practically surrounded. On the one side, there is Germany. On the other, the USSR. Both countries are making claims on Poland's territory, and diplomats begin to sound the alarm. German provocations on the border are becoming more frequent. The British and the French sign an agreement to defend Poland in the event of a German attack. 
it becomes clear to Schulenberg that war with Poland is unavoidable and that Hitler, with the help of the agreement Schulenberg has made, only intended to buy Stalin's consent to a German invasion of Poland. Two years later, Schulenberg's dreams of a peaceful solution will completely collapse when Germany declares war on the USSR. And in 1944, he will be hanged as one of the conspirators in a plot against Hitler.